Welcome everyone. This is the fourth week of 13 weeks and we are nearing the end at this point of the first week of water. And uh, the reason why I didn't film earlier, uh, normally I try to do it on a Tuesday, and the reason why I didn't do it sooner is because, hey Matthew, uh, is because I was deep in the fire. Um, I was in uh, Santa Cruz, California and San Francisco and Fremont and I was deep in the fire of creativity. We had a wonderful week uh, two weeks actually of leadership training and um, you know the goal was to uh, bring out our vision fire one right uh, to bring out our visions and uh, to bring it out into the world of our peers and we had a wonderful group of people there were 88 people from 20 different countries which was incredibly exciting and we had the opportunity to practice our, our fire two, which is bringing our vision out into the world and relating to other people around this, getting um, our words down, getting our vision down so that we could share it with others. Uh, but true to form for fire two was also, good morning David, uh, being true to fire two, uh, which is the realm of expression and creativity, uh, was uh, our willingness and openness to not only receive insight and support from res all sorts of resources from the other leaders, the other consultants and the rest, but also to offer our support to each other. So it was wonderful, you know, you could really feel this sense that you had this circle of trusting people around you to support you. And so first for, part of FIRE was about vision or is about vision second part of fire is about daring to bring it out into the world and allowing the the world to burn away what's not working out what's not really um, needed or what's not really true to your vision or purpose or not really resonating with the world um, there's this opportunity both to gain resources and to true your vision in a way that resonates with the world in which you seek to serve so I had this wonderful opportunity to do that for two weeks and at the end of it as challenging as uh, parts of it still were there there became instilled a bit of fire three which is uh, finding something a message to put my faith in um, a way to learn more about what it is that um, I need to do to get my vision of soul lab out into the world and so true to form for fire three the final phase of fire which is bringing it all together and having um, dared to go out in the world with a vision and to expose that vision to the world and to find models and insights and challenges and and places where it, it is it is of, of need of service of interest uh, the final phase says um, now live into it um, live through that uh, uh, vision that uh, resonates with the world uh, what has burned away is the goal that uh, you want to carry forward and so a message uh, became clear uh, for myself as a leader for Solab but also um, uh, an, a sign and, and insights from others of where uh, Solab uh, resonated with them and where they wanted to support it and be a part of it so there became this sort of fire of three phase of um, of holding space for that and taking it to another level of learning, of, um, of connection, of ritual, of ceremony around it. So that was extraordinary. But now we're in water one. Now we've you know, gone through this arcing Icarus-like pathway, right? Uh, fiery vision, all oh, we could see a big world and the truing away um, of that which is not, in, not really our path and then going out into the world and finding something in the world that parallels something that's inside of us but it's out in the world and so that final phase of fire is as finding that resonance right where there's a, a sacred mirror occurring saying uh, this is what this inner vision looks like out in the world so that when we hit that place it always calls for this um, 
equal and opposite movement inward. So there's this movement out into the world, but then that calls at some point for an inner movement back into self and back into why we're here. So Water One this week has been about uh, what, what's underneath the surface of all of the doing, all of the trying, all of the efforting we do in the world. All of this fiery, egoic, pushing to become, to be, um, uh, trying to uh, see our vision into the world of what it is we're wanting to become a part of or to create in the world. When you dive into the water, that first phase of water is like, you know, diving into the water on a hot summer day immediately there, there is this, you know, uh, this immediate, it's almost a shock, but there is this immediate being engulfed by the water and held by it, and there's this immediate sense of blissful comfort, you know? There's this sense of uh, coming home back to some inner truth, something so primal, you know? Like uh, being back in the womb or something. There's just this nurturing feeling to this, this feeling like we're coming back home. And so, true to form and fitting for where we're at, I just arrived home yesterday and after a couple of weeks a real intensive uh, pushing and fiery burning away and, and, try, and truing something, uh, the calcinatio, you know. And now I'm back home and entering into the solutio phase, this phase of being comforted by my children, by my wife, by, by my home, what's familiar, what uh, we've created this um, place where we feel at home and nurtured and comforted. And so um, I'm offering this uh, a little late because of, uh, you know, the journey of before. But I also see it's very fitting uh, for the time we're in. It's lovely that we have an eclipse coming up because the eclipse is, uh, has uh, always been seen as, a, as an ominous sort of, you know, warning from the universe. At the very least, it's been a sort of a, a checking in time of uh, checking in with shadow stuff that's happening, right? And so on Monday, tomorrow, we'll enter the first phase of Water 2, which is about entering a little bit deeper beyond this sort of comfortable place of feeling held and nurtured and comforted, which is what we've been um, playing with this week. And next week we're entering into a little bit deeper phase of, um, uh, you know, it's sort of the middle water is really about taking that nurturing feeling, that uh, connection with our emotional intelligence, our emotional life, and daring to be open to really looking at what's deeper, looking at uh, what's ready to let go, uh, what's ready to be washed clean from our, our, our field. Um, you know, if the fiery realm is about vision and future possibilities and this egoic process of becoming, the water realm is getting to a deeper why. Why are you here? Uh, what's, what's beneath the surface of all of this that we're doing? And the first phase might feel very comforting and a lot of us really love to tap into that emotional connection. And you know, I think part of the issue is that we don't want to get too much deeper into our emotional connection because there is this inherent fear of what's beneath the surface, what's beneath uh, this wonderful feeling of em emotional security. Um, we all have these parts of our nature uh, that are ready to let go. And so finally, fitting the end of this day and, and entering into this sort of eclipse that's, you know, kind of holding a space for us to reflect on uh, the darkness in our outer world, reflecting a, possibly a darkness in our inner worlds. <clears throat> in this state, first state of water, it really creates a really wonderful place uh, to tap into your uh, deep emotional nature, your deep emotional intelligence and letting it nurture you, letting it uh, bring that life-giving sustenance of water to, uh, to calm the fires, to cool down uh, the, the all-too-speedy and fast-moving mind and spirit, and simply allow yourself at this time to 
uh, really be enveloped by what nurtures you in this world and your world. And the, the goal is, or are, are the promises that this tapping into this feeling of really being nurtured. Uh, when you were a child, when you were uh, at the times in your life when you f really felt seen and nurtured and understood, to tap back into that and remember, uh, let all of your being really get that feeling of what it is like to let go, to let go of the striving and the need to be, and simply dropping into this place of being. There's nothing to prove, nothing to do. To drop into this deeper place where an inner vision becomes clear or an inner sensation, an inner feeling of what resonates most with you inwardly. To be able to truly and powerfully uh, create in the world and to be in the world uh, it really asks for first this deeper sense of knowing of who we are on an inner level. And so Water One is really asking us to let go into this fluidity, to be like water, uh, to be accepting and holding uh, and settling into uh, the spaces where there is this equal, this equalness, this uh, balancing occurring, right? This natural uh, movement towards harmony. It doesn't take effort. It's allowing gravity, allowing our emotional body just to find what feels nurturing. To remember all the times and all the ways that we have felt comforted in our lives, that we have been nurtured by the world and all those beings in the world who have uh, offered us this deep sense of emotional trust and, and a sense of faith and being seen. And so for the remainder of the day as we open ourselves up to the week ahead, which is the second part of water, it's deep transformation, you know, it's starting in the astrological realm, it's scorpionic, it's the eighth house of death and rebirth, of, of you know, transformation. But the first phase, it's interesting how the first phase of water really at first says, okay, we're going deep inside now. We're going to come below the surface, but first let's let go. The fire may burn away, but the water washes away. It's the solutio from calcinatio, the burning away, the phoenix rises, and now we're going deeper to the solutio, the, the, the washing of the waters. And so at this time, before we head in deeper and before we get into the eclipse, uh, this is a great time to feel nurtured and to remember what nurtures you and to hold space for nurturing in your life and hold space for nurturing in others that are around you. To come from a place of heart, dropping out of the head into the heart and really opening yourself up to uh, um, really dialing into this feeling of emotional security, emotional comfort, and letting that emanate. You know, they, they say that the heart is the center of our emotional body, but they also say that the heart is the center of our connection with our higher wisdom, you know, the heavenly wisdom, and the merging of the wisdom from our earthly Gaian wisdom, right? So in the heart, uh, they say it's like the conductor of the orchestra. And the Taoist work, uh, all the organs hold a, a form of wisdom which can, you know, go astray or can actually be quite uh, a, a virtue for us. When the heart is in a virtuous state, it sets a tone, it sets a rhythm for all the other parts of our being to come into resonance. As the heart goes, so does all the rest of us. So, in the tradition of the Taoist work, smiling into the heart, and if you've done heart math before, you'll know, you'll be familiar with this. Smiling into your heart, and breathing out, maybe breathing out through the mouth, any darkness out of the heart, and breathing in the heavenly light, maybe a beautiful ruby red light, fire flowing in 
to the heart, swirling it around like the, the celestial fires. And remember in the heart that sense of love and joy and compassion. And let it burn away any impurities in the heart as you breathe it in fully, smiling into the heart, seeing the heart smiling back and breathing out maybe with a ha sound. And imagine releasing out of the heart any darkness of anything that you're carrying for the world or uh, from within yourself. It's a great invitation to release that which no longer serves you or the world. If we are indeed uh, the co-creators of this world, we have this wonderful opportunity to breathe in love and joy and swirl it in our being and emanate it into our whole being so that we become tuned in and turned on to love and joy, the portals into a higher state of oneness and connection, something that stirs the vagus nerve, you know, this counter to this, this uh, central nervous system fight or flight response. The vagus nerve is about tuning into our oneness and our, our sense of connection to each other, that warm and fuzzy feeling of wanting to give the world a hug, you know. So if you could for this moment remember those feelings, to tune into it, to dial into it like a radio station, a beautiful, uh, you know, 102.5 love or whatever, it's tune into that station and imagine as you breathe in from the universe, from Mother Earth, into the heart that remembrance of our true nature, of our truth, of being agents of love, of being agents of joy. And allowing that to emanate through your whole body, alighting your body with the fire of a higher wisdom in harmony with the wisdom of Mother Earth. And imagine as you do so, it starts to emanate in the field around you and into the world around you, fractaling into the matrix of our world and sending it out as a prayer request, as an offering to this world at this time and smiling into it knowing that that fire uh, lights up any darkness in the world. And there is a, a big truth to that, that there is no darkness that uh, uh, doesn't concede to the light of something bright, the heavenly wisdom, the heavenly joy and love. So as we do prepare to plunge a little deeper, which is oh so necessary and oh so important, it's not a, a penance or a punishment, it's an invitation to go deeper, to dare to release that which is no longer serving us or you or me. We can hold this light in the heart to guide us. It's like the yin and yang symbol. The yin symbol has the dark, you know, it's a dark merging, submerging into the water and into the earth. But in the center of it is the um, center is white light. It's always holding that counter. The, the thing that drives us into the dark is truly that thing that is most light about us, inviting us to get a little deeper, to go a little bit deeper than our persona, which is as wonderful as it is, is um, just a, a way for us to synapse with the world out here. But what we're offering at this point in our own development is giving ourselves and each other the opportunity to get a little deeper, to get a little bit more watery, more feminine, more open, inductive, um, complementary to this fiery world to offer a space of fluidity, of love. And so as we enter into this space of water and going deeper into the final week, uh, the, not the final week, I'm saying that because you know, it's always fun for anybody, but before we enter into the middle of fire, which is asking us to give ourselves over to um, a sort of sacrifice, a sort of release and letting go of something that we might have been guarding or protecting or trying to keep alive that no longer really needs to be alive, that needs to be released so that something new can come through. 
these concessions of living in a cyclical world and a world of elements um, is something that I think we're always getting used to as, as uh, infinite beings, as celestial beings. But the more we become in touch with the elements of this earthly living, the more we can be guided through our own development uh, as spiritual beings, yes, but as spiritual beings embodied and as spiritual beings being on a mission to be of service to this world. And as we saw in the fire realm, to be in service is really to understand the world in which you're in service to, both the challenges, the needs and, and um, the needs and wishes of the world around you, the models in which uh, can help to guide you and how you can be in service to the world, and also the inner egoic, the inner des the values, the, the beliefs, the, uh, this deep sense of, um, of purpose that you have, um, all will uh, support you in burning away uh, the egoic stuff that is truly just ego-based desire stuff that isn't really in service to what you're here to do, and the water realm will help you wash clean any emotional uh, inner inner stuff that's ready to be released and let go. So as we see in each of the stages, uh, each of the elements and each of the stages of the element, there are uh, you know wonderful aspects that call us into it, that draws into the element. Uh, to be nurtured is a big part of why we dive into the water and need for emotional connection. But then there's also that part that says, Thank I'm glad you're nurtured and feeling really good because it's time to let some things inside change. So, not so that there is this, um, you know, again, not something to punish, but simply to be able to really s hold space for and tune into uh, that which is the shadow stuff within that's ready to let go. And if we do it in a good way, those shadowy parts of ourselves don't really die, they transform but the way it appears and the way it feels can really feel like an egoic death or an emotional uh, dying away. So there's all these wonderful um, dynamics going on. So as we enter into this next phase of water, uh, there is a, a sense that we're entering into another hero's journey. You know, I can see that the fire and the water is the first phase of, of distillation, of burning away and washing away. to synthesizing these two wonderful elements to come from this high state of inspiration to get to this deeper state of understanding where the gold is found, as gold is cleared away and, and made present. And the second phase of earth and air is to take that elixir and prepare it and bring it out into the world in the air realm. But for now, to be here now with this offering this blessing, this um, baptism of sort, right, is to really hold space for that which is transforming within your own nature that's ready to let go. And as they've done forever, and the Hindu, from the Hindu to the uh, Native Americans, there's this awareness that this time of an eclipse is really a time to respect and honor that there is um, darkness within all of us and um, it just it is, it's part of why we're here. And to hold space for that in a loving way is really a great way to um, hold space for its transformation. Uh, so we offered a, a Hella put up a, a video, that a audio that I did, um, that is the, uh, the shadow um, meditation. And I truly love this meditation because it offers a way to um, powerfully and beautifully um, hold space for the shadows in our lives, whatever's coming up for you, and to do so with the, uh, with the knowing that if done in a good way, that shadow transforms into an ally to support. So sort of like the dragon becomes your, an asset if you can uh, find that resonant way to relate to it and to release it from uh, you know, it's frightening mask and see what's the pearl beneath all of that. So uh, enjoy that video or audio and I think it's, I think she did it as a video as well. Um, and um, use this as an opportunity to come from a place of love and self-love and respect for yourself and respect for the shadowy parts of your nature 
not to say that I have these shadows, therefore I'm imperfect. Of course we're imperfect. But I truly believe that's why we're here. As, as uh, they say in the, the Christian uh, realm of Christ said to be, we're here to be witnesses. And in that way, there's a power in being a witness, to be able to come from the heart and to sit with uh, that which we tend to run from or repress or pretend it doesn't exist or we fight it or we run from it or we fear it, you know, or feel victim to it. This is an opportunity to really be with that in a transformative way and to offer uh, this presence with this part of your nature as an opportunity for the gold within that part to rise up and to be in service on the path ahead to become yet another deeper part of your own elixir. So water one we're completing. Uh, water two will start uh, tomorrow, Monday, and uh, I will uh, do a live video on again on Tuesday after the eclipse and um, we'll look a little bit deeper into uh, the nature and possibilities of the middle of the water realm of transformation and rebirth. So thank you guys for joining in. Um, for those of you who are uh, following what we're doing with Solab, uh, and speaking of uh, watery transformations, I just wanted to spend a few minutes and um, and give a, uh, some insight into where we're at with it because it's very exciting. So, let's see how to begin. Uh, as most of you know, it's been a long process for me. It's been a beautiful process, but most of it for the 18 years has been as much as I wanted to bring this vision out to the world. Um, the fire was burning was mostly for myself, which is what I love about this work. The more you bring out something, the more it trues you and it's about you, and I love that. So this has all led to this place where, and maybe in the past six months, uh, we've started to form a bit of a team, right? And we had a wonderful first round, a 13-week pro process with the Solab group, which was my first real bringing this work out to a bigger audience other than my students or clients. And it was so incredibly powerfully affirming and uh, transforming for some that I see value in continuing to bring this forward. So since that time, we have definitely developed some things. We have found models for approaching this uh, in terms of building a virtual platform. Uh, so with Sunil Shah and his uh, beautiful, wonderful wife, Renu, uh, we're looking at, um, at developing a platform based on this new technology that um, is really going to be a powerful way for us to come together and share with each other uh, for a long time to come. It's going to keep evolving. But the idea is to create a venue for us to, uh, to really embrace this open, open source sort of soulware platform, right? Where we are coming together as peers to share across our systems, across beliefs, across platforms, uh, to, uh, to really enter into the spirit of uh, collaboration. Uh, because we all know we're in this place where um, it's time to to share what we have, right? So if you are really interested and excited to share what you have, um, to offer what you have to others, um, it both becomes a way uh, to give back to the world and give back to your peers who are also working in this world of transformation and being change agents, but it also offers an opportunities for others to see uh, the beautiful uh, wisdom that you have and to allow them to find you and to uh, support you, work with you, and help guide your program. So in this way, I see a lot of opportunity for us to help each other, uh, to support each other, and to really get beyond this, this sort of proprietary notion of this is mine, although we all know that what is ours has been offered to us by our elders, by our ancestors, by the world. And so we're creating a platform where you can share in a good way that's not giving away your programs, that's not giving away your hard-fought and hard-earned uh, wisdom completely, right? 
but instead is offering a place to come and focus on these very unique but uh, shared aspects of our lives, our developmental lives, of through the fire, through the water, through the air, earth and air, where you can come and offer your bit of wisdom to uh, uh, raise all of our consciousness about what that area of life means to you. What does uh, fiery vision and being the hero or the heroine uh, mean in terms of your worldview? And in your worldview, what gifts do you have to offer uh, the community to help them move through that uh, process of being and becoming, right? So in the areas of creativity and expression, through the areas of ritual and ceremony, through this wonderful area we're in now, which is the water realm of nurturing and, and soulful living and emotional intelligence, um, offering from your heart, from your wisdom, what, how you understand this area, um, how you work with it with your clients maybe, and offering your peers an opportunity to expand their own insights and their own way of doing things so that we all uh, create this field of opportunity that extends beyond our own individual knowings, right? So that's what Soul Lab is in a nutshell, is an opportunity uh, to come together, to, sh to connect with each other, to share wisdom, um, and to help organize our experiences in a way that is both elemental, meaning that it's based on this medicine wheel or this, this uh, way that the elements come to support our process, but also so you can organize your own tools and resources in a way that uh, you can have easier access to for yourself and for your clients and students and the rest. So uh, this platform with Sunil and uh, Ray New, and now we have Allison Goudreau and, and Manhattan and Brooklyn, who is going to be our fabulous art director, uh, making this incredible, beautiful uh, um, being of Soul Lab um, come to life right and she does all the branding and rest uh, Ray New Sunil's wife will be oh sorry bug stepped on a bug who just bit me uh, Ray New will help also with the design concept and uh, we have uh, Sarah Wicker who is project managing thank you Sarah uh, a million times over uh, we have Doug Foreman who's helping us with the marketing and and development and get helping everything come together and we, we have an incredible team of people. We have uh, Jason and Paul and Jennifer and Hella, who's been helping us. And, uh, I, you know, I could say Michelle and Kimberly and, uh, I mean, everybody that's already on this, um, uh, on this Solab group is of tremendous support. So it's happening, and we hope to have, uh, within like four to five months, a beta of the Soul Lab group and we're going to invite in all of you to, uh, it's, it's a private invite uh, to beta test it with us, right? So that's kind of like the final phase of Earth. First phase of Earth, we've got a seed of a way. Second phase of Earth, we're drawing all the resources together, which is what we're doing now. And the final phase of Earth is really perfecting the form of it. So we're, you know, as we're going through this 13 weeks, we're again paralleling with with the development of Soul Lab. I mean, I love how all these things are so synchronistically beautiful. So what I'm asking from you guys is something, or sorry, I'm, I'm gonna rephrase the guys things. I say guys a lot, and, and I mean guys and gals sort of thing. I just see it very um, gender neutral, but what shall I say? Um, from all of you incredible souls, um, I'm offering uh, a request from you to, uh, we do have some things that we need, right? Uh, here's what we need. Soul Lab is going to be this tremendous database, right, where we can all gather and learn from. So, and from all around the spiral, right, all around the medicine wheel. So what we need is, um, if you look at my model, or the model of the, you know, the elements, just like in the astrology wheel, um, if you looked at the elements and saw areas that uh, you have some great ideas about, or you know some good resources to support this, um, we're looking for to really build that database up. So we're asking all of you to be kind of the eyes and ears and, and experts in these, um, these areas. And uh, eventually we're going to look for editors for each of the four elements. Um, so if, any, if there's interest there, we can definitely, we'd love to talk about that. 
Um, but for now, we're looking at, um, before we even get the, um, the actual platform up and running, we're looking for insights and, and points of wisdom, links and meditations and videos, um, conceptual, you know, experiential um, uh, insights into transformation from all these different areas of life. We really want to create a place where we all get a really broad insight into the dynamics of uh, powerful transformation. So, again, the platform itself is an open source shareware. We're, we're looking for this to be your place and my place to come together and offer uh, anyone who's a member the opportunity to evolve themselves. So that means that um, a lot of sharing has to happen. So we invite you in for that. Um, in terms of the beta test, all who are interested, we will invite you in. And, um, and the main thing is it'll be a nice rough beta, um, but the idea is to play in it and really kind of look and, look and see what's working and what would make it better, and then to help us make it something uh, uniquely powerful to serve this mission, this vision of coming together and sharing and transforming, but also the mission of creating a place where we can uh, come together uh, meet with each other and create breakout groups, mastermind groups, and this sort of thing together. So this becomes a place to really um, uh, incubate new relationships and new connections with each other because we none of us can do any of this alone. And the whole purpose of this is a recognition that it's time to kind of give up the island so we can save our home, right? Um, so. Uh, all of this is done with that mission in mind. How we're going to do it, it's coming into uh, focus now. Um, and I would love for all of you to be a big part of that and helping us to understand um, not only the mission and the vision, but the how. how. How will this work best for you? How does it feel when you're doing the beta test? Um, what would make it better? And, and that sort of thing. So. Uh, that's my request from you guys. Anything you have in mind, any models that you know that might serve us to look into uh, any insights from your perspective as a, as a healer or as a transformational agent, right? We'd love to hear from you. Um, so that said, um, I'm going to drop back into the water realm and come back to this place of heart. And from the bottom of my heart, or from the fullness of my heart, I thank you all for um, holding this space for each other. It's, um, it's, it's been amazing to see what can happen uh, when we do come together with, with good intentions and, and with a willingness to open ourselves to more than this. And I see more than this coming through, and, but it's because of this that it can come through. So thank you all. For being here supporting this and uh, this is our time to rise and to create uh, a new world and uh, it's already here it's just asking us to tune in and and to gather together and see that uh, as they say the gods between us and to hold space for that coming through uh, honoring our unique wisdom our unique insights our unique knowing our unique learning from our ancestors from our teachers from our elders from our children and to be in this space together uh, in a very loving way. Uh, so I love you guys. Thank you for being a big part of this and I really look forward to more. And we're going to make it through this week, right? We're going to make it through whatever needs to be released and supporting each other makes it a lot easier. So um, I'm going to remain true to that and hold to that. and go inside and go deep and do some shadow work myself and I know that it will be a lot easier to do knowing that all of you are here uh, supporting me and supporting each other. Love you guys. Thank you very much. Have a blessed weekend or what remains of it and uh, here's to uh, a kick-ass eclipse, right? Love you guys. Bye.